Okay, so our test subject today is uh, unfortunately what would have been a very nice rifle in a past life. Um, somehow, somewhere along the line, it was bent and cracked. Uh, so I recently had a person reach out to me and ask me about straightening um, actions. And of course it depends on a lot of things, but uh, I'm going to show you guys uh, kind of the basics. Now this is a intensive project and it is expensive, uh, but if you have the right project, it's, uh, it's worth doing. So as you can see, this action is, is obviously bent. Um, I'm going to snug it up and uh, I'm going to show you in another short little clip how to apply a little extra pressure. I'm going to be careful doing that because a lot of these actions will crack further um, if you apply too much pressure. So you just want to gently apply pressure. And the idea here is, is that when we go to anneal this action, you want some tension to draw it back down. Um, straighten itself out basically under heat. Now, Sometimes they'll settle right down and you don't need anything. Uh, steel does want to return to its state of least stress. Um, sometimes they need a little more persuasion. So we'll see how this one goes. Okay, so I snug this one up. Uh, this is as close as it would come. Uh, I want to snug it up a little bit more than that. Um, at some point, you're gonna strip the screws uh, unless you apply outside pressure. So um, I keep a set of uh, just some homemade oak uh, vice jaws on my bench vise. Um, they don't last as long as lead vice jaws, but you know, I'm kind of weird about lead. I don't know. Uh, so I'm just gonna apply just a little bit of pressure here and try and see if I can sneak this down a little bit more. Yep, there I got the gap yep, pretty well closed. So now I'm going to snug these up and snug, snug this one up a little bit. That one's as snug as it'll go. Okay, we'll call that good. We're going to put it in the furnace. Okay, so this is our furnace. We're going to set this up to anneal it. Um, I use one of these little even heat kiln heat treat ovens. Um, from an industrial standpoint, they're a piece of crap. They're extremely cheaply made. Uh, very clumsy, thin sheet metal. You know, all the latches are junk. Uh, but it gets the job done for most things. Um, you know, if you're if you're not going to be doing a lot of heat treat and stuff like that, um, occasional annealing, um, that sort of thing. This is a heck of a lot more convenient than firing up uh, a set of big natural gas uh, heat treat ovens, um, which you know I have, but I don't use. So uh, this is this is a lot more convenient. Um, so set to 1150. That's typically what I anneal uh, low carbon steel at. Uh, it does produce a small amount of scale, which you'll see when this is done. Um, yeah. Uh, I soak it for about an hour, um, so this will ramp up to 100, uh, 1150 and then it will hold at that temperature for an hour. Uh, and uh, I'll show you guys when, when we pull it out what it looks like. I always thought this was really neat. I don't really understand the chemistry or the science. I think that's the ballooning, oxidation, I don't know. I just thought it was neat how it forms these little curls. I've seen that numerous times. Okay, so we're all done. Now the question is, is it going to work? It looks pretty good. So there's a slight gap there since the screw was pulling it down it probably bowed just a little bit here now but it's a heck of an improvement because before this wouldn't go in so 
I would say that's a success.